Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Welcome, welcome, Epic Conquerors. We're so excited that you're joining with us today. I have a special guest hostess with me in this particular episode and we're going to be talking about some very interesting things and one of those things that I'd like to kick off with is how often have you ever said this or heard someone else say it oh I wish I had fill in the blank something different than obviously what we have at the moment and so the thing about that is that's not really a true statement, is it? I wish I had blah, blah, blah. Because if we really wanted it, we would go after it. And that is such a perfect lead-in for our guest, Akessa, who we actually interviewed a year ago on this podcast, and now she's joining me today as a guest hostess. And Akessa had a wish and a hope and a dream, but she put to it and I'd love Akessa to share that with you and to greet you all and then share her little story about what she's doing now and how she's moving forward with that I wish I had. Welcome Akessa. Hi guys. Hi. (laughs) Thank you. Um, Hi Epic Conquerors. Um, Nice to be back. I I can't believe it's been a year. It's so crazy to me. yeah, so I the last time we spoke, I think I was um, serving as a food server. Yeah, uh, I, and I was waiting because as you know, an air hostess, I, right? Or what did they call that's them? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, flight attendant. Flight attendant. So, sorry. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And um, that was three years ago, and I remember walking through the international. Uh, portion of the airport at LAX and I saw this Airbus pull in and I was just immediately drawn to it and um, I'm like oh I want to fly for them and so as as I was um, continuing on as a flight attendant you have to go in for training um, and retraining every year so my annual training I saw this female pilot oh. walking and I just like <laughs> pump the brakes. Yep. What is this is happening in me. And so I follow her to the simulation room and and I was just like, I didn't know like, you know, women could be pilots, you know, and I mean this was three years ago. So like <laughs> where was I? Under a rock? Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know it's amazing how like you go through life and you just you you don't see those things as often. And so I, I just was like, I'm ready to do this. This, this was just like, my heart just leapt. you know what I mean? Yep. And so as I was um, doing it, I would journal and, um, and that was like one of the things that I would write down. Thank you for, um, you know, preparing me to become a pilot. Um, I would journal, um, thank you for financing for me becoming a pilot. And, and then I would revisit it, you know, and seeing like how, how that process was coming along and it wasn't coming along fast enough. So I was just like, okay, well then what, what do we need to do? So I started talking to my pilots that I was working with and, you know, they gave me some options and then I started looking at schools and um, I kept trying to do both at the same time, you know, like um, I, I want to do the flight attendant thing, but I also want to go to school. Yeah, and we try to keep one foot on each uh, shoreline, don't we? We don't I want to cut loose and head to the one. And that's a huge pivoting point that we all have to make when we desire something. We have Absolutely. to let go of the comfort zone part. And and. And just that's literally what yeah. I had to do. Yeah. I had to um, just walk away from being a flight attendant and just pursue becoming a pilot 100%. Yeah. 
And um, it took me a little bit. I had to call the Department of Education because I had been out of school for like 20 years. And um, I had to wait. Um, but in that waiting, like I found joy, you know, because I saw the little victories yeah. along the way. You were making the steps and the decisions that needed to be made to right. take you where you are now fully on in your schooling, which is absolutely phenomenal. And one of these days, Akes is going to be a f- pilot. Woohoo! That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's be awesome. And that's kind of the subject that we're talking about today, Epic Conquers, is the idea of the thoughts that come into our hearts and our minds and that which ones should we act on in order to bring about a desired ending. I mean, I heard this statement one time that 60,000 thoughts go through our brain every day. And I thought, my goodness, no wonder we need to have a time to go to bed at night to let our brains reset. That's an awful lot of thoughts, you know. Yeah, it really, really is. And so we understand in the scriptures that talk about pulling down strongholds and things like that, because obviously those thoughts are trying to take root in our head usually in the direction away from the things that would make us epic conquerors. So we've got to be able to discern which thoughts to really hold on to and allow to come into fruition. So I was pondering on those things and it came to my understanding or my realization that we could probably take a hold of the thoughts that go in our minds and categorize them into some buckets And so in your show notes, I put there's five buckets that we could maybe put these thoughts into that could help us discern which ones are keepers and which ones do we want to toss out. What do you think about that, Akessa? So that's funny that you say that because um, it really spoke to my science nerdiness. And so I actually did... um, an actual exercise where I wanted to track myself. Woo! And I love it. (laughs) I created these columns and um, every thought I would just tick Tick. off. Yep. Yeah. And so I did it over a two day period. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. And it was incredible how many times, like um, how many times each bucket and I guess we should go over each bucket, right? Yeah, we will. Yeah, but just tell us what your tally was. What did yeah. you kind of come up with? <laughs> so the first day, I was just like, oh, yep, there's that one. And there's that one. There were a lot, like, I want to say 90% of, you know, the not so positive columns were yep. ticked off. Um And the second day, once I became more cognizant of what I was doing, it was less. Oh, that's a beautiful scientific experiment. I'm going to encourage every Epic Conqueror, after we list these five buckets, that you do the same exercise because it will really kind of open up your understanding sometimes of what and how we allow so many negative things to come into our minds let them grab a hold of us and then we act out on them or our emotions act out on them. And we can save ourselves a lot of pity parties and a lot of negative emotions and poor me and all that. If we would take the time to try this experiment like Akessa did. Well done. Well, let's look at the first one. The first bucket of five is discounting or minimizing our accomplishments and our progress to date. So in other words, whatever you've done in your life up to now, thoughts come to you that try to discount that and say, oh, that wasn't so much of a big deal or Mm -hmm. minimizing it like, yeah, you know, but other people have done better than you so that you takes away your ability to celebrate. What do you think, Kessa? Oh, my goodness. I was so surprised because, um, you know, that, that negative thought that, you know, we had talked about a year ago that, you know, you and brother Chad were talking about, um, that inner dialogue. It, it so was, you know, 
diminishing, like, yeah, put you down. You know, right. Yeah. Right. These are yeah. like real achievements that God had like brought you through and he wants you to take credit for it too, because yeah. he was there. Like Jesus yeah. said, you yeah. Give, give him the all, glory for it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm so, yeah. Yeah. So when we have our thoughts minimizing and discounting what we've have accomplished in the past, that really takes away, doesn't it, from our energy level to want to go forward and try to conquer something else because we feel like, what the heck, what's the use? You know, it's probably not going to work out that well anyway. And so we self-talk ourselves out of moving forward. So I found myself like my emotions were like yeah. high and low, high and low. Yeah. Like, and there were times, even like when I went shopping, a thought would come up and I'm, and I would have to like tell myself, have to stop it. Like, mm. <laughs> catch yourself. That's beautiful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so this is not what Jesus's blood is for. There <laughs> okay. you go. There you go. Just that talking to yourself. You know, we do have to reparent ourselves as adults because we have brought a lot of baggage with us throughout our upbringing and our early adult years. And so when we start understanding how this works, we realize we have to do a lot of self-talk or reparenting, I call it, to help reframe our brain so yes. that we think and act differently. So the second bucket, let's talk about that one. Yes. The second bucket is when we discount, have thoughts that are discounting or minimizing God's ability to come through when life is tough. And I remember a gentleman in our church years ago when we were pastoring, um, he said, well, I know God heals other people, but will he heal me? And to me, that's like one of those thoughts that would right. discount or minimize that God has the ability or would want to come through for you while you're struggling in your issues. So what do you think about that bucket? I think saints always um have like this self-sabotage yeah you know it's like we're almost like not worthy of god's ability to bring us through when he's made it very clear in his word like you are my friend you, you know i created you yeah, I you're my you child yeah womb. yeah before how could we before. not be worthy if we're his child right, right. Yeah. yeah so it that one was and especially now in the pandemic of 2020, for all of our listeners who are going to be, you know, hitting the, the repeat button. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, you would think like, where is God in all of this, right? right. Those are the thoughts that try to bombard us out of those 60,000. <laughs> right. Tell us that God's not going to come through for you in this thing. And uh, we know that that's a lie. So Certainly third, for me, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> um, you know, this could easily just like sidetrack me and, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. Like I did have like some severe anxiety. I'm like, okay, Lord, like, yeah, no, I'm going to be a pilot. <laughs> There's no travel right now. Yeah. Like all the schools, like my pilot friends and my flight attendant friends, they're getting furloughed. Like what's happening? Like I, I you yeah. told me yeah. like on such and such day and yep. boom, like aviation industry is hugely Grounded. impacted. Yeah. Right? yeah. And he's like, mm. yeah. Yeah. And he's got plans that we don't know. And he understands right. how he can do a suddenly and yeah. everything shift back in. And then we're prepared for that shift. We'll be in position, but yeah, I love what you just said there. And that's so true. Because a lot of times we second guess by the outer circumstances that we're living in and we don't really fully give God credit <laughs> yeah. that he's leading us in a certain place to get us at a, a situation at the right time. And so we have to trust him. But those thoughts come to minimize or discount God's ability to come through for us when life is tough. So bucket number three, if you're taking notes and making a log like uh, Akessa did so you can check your own thoughts, which is a fantastic project. <laughs> Bucket number three is discounting or minimizing God's promises to us. And that's another one that, you know, you're standing on the promises of God and you're yes and amen to all the promises. And then boom, you feel like it's not going to happen. <laughs> Uh, 
because zigs and zags come about in our life that sometimes cause us to feel like, you know, God's promises maybe this time aren't going to come to pass. Have you ever like made a decision knowing that it was God's promise and then what happened when it just fell apart? Like, well, we keep on keeping <laughs> on. That's what we do because yeah. I know I've had those things happen so many times where I thought, this is it. I'm right. finally stepping into this wide, broad, green place of pastures of abundance and supply and provision and everything going for it. And then it just <laughs> felt like face plant, you know. So yes. but that's where you pick yourself up, dust yourself off and keep on going because you realize if that wasn't it, mm -hmm. then the it is still coming and it'll be better than what that would have turned out to be. Right. So we pick ourselves up and keep on going. But it is interesting that out of the 60,000 thoughts flying through our brains, that so many of them would want to discount or minimize God's promises to us because it's like the devil wants to neener, neener, neener right? and just say, you know, ha ha, you know, God's just putting a carrot in front of you to dangle it in front of you and then he's going to pull it away. And it's like, no, God's character is not like that. He has given us promises because he wants to hold on to them. I think of like Joseph when he got his coat of many colors as a kid and the dreams that God had given him. But yet his journey, as we all know, and the cliche is from pit to palace, he had to go through a whole lot of things to come to the fruition of that promise coming right. to us. But he had to hold on tight and that became his anchor. And that's what I've discovered in life too, is those promises become our anchor that we hold on to because we know God is faithful. Right. As, as I was going through this exercise, like it really made me like, um, ask, you know, have this like internal conversation. Like, is this really God's promise? Well, yeah. That's a good one too. Yeah. Right. And I, and I had to say, well, where else did it come from? It's there like, you go. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Yes. Yes. You know, like, yes. honestly, it, it, so yeah, the devil's I, not going to give you promises of blessings up ahead. <laughs> thank you. That's exactly what I was just like, yes. well, who's going to benefit from this? That's you know? right. That's and right. I was just like, isn't this all for God's glory anyways? Like, yep. so yep. why can't he use me? That That's was right. Like Ooh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a good one, Tessa. That's every beautiful. time I think about you know that one in particular I thought about the serpent in the garden where yep. he's just like you know like did God oh. say right as he slithers on by yeah. <laughs> oh that little turkey <laughs> I oh know. that's so true but yeah we have to flip the script on all of these things, don't we? Absolutely. But until we recognize those thoughts are flying through our brain, we kind of accept them as though there are thoughts, but they're not. They're just thoughts flying through, seeing which ones will stick. Right. Just like how sometimes I say to people, I just throw mud on the wall and see what'll stick. I just try different things. And in the same way, all those thoughts flying through are trying to see which ones will you grab, let and allow to grab on and then put down roots in you and become a belief and then become a stronghold to literally strangle you. Yeah. So doing this exercise like you did is just amazing. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So now <laughs> the fourth bucket out of our five is discounting or minimizing our faith in God to fulfill his words to us. Because God gives each of us a quickening or a promise in his scriptures or he speaks through someone else prophetically to us or what have you. And the thoughts that fly through try to undermine that faith in God to fulfill those words. And it kind of fits along with bucket number three just a little bit, but it is a little bit different as well. Those thoughts that try to minimize our faith, like, you know, you don't have enough faith. You, you're not pleasing God with your faith. You, you're not exercising enough faith. You know, everything to just kind of discredit what we have. 
which makes me really remember when Jesus said, even if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, which is so inty teensy beansy, you could tell that mountain to pick up and go throw yourself in the sea. So, yeah, so those thoughts that try to minimize our faith and our trust and our belief in God uh, are so detrimental to us. What do you think about that one? So when I was Googling mustard seed, because, you know, once again, yep. that's just how I'm wired. <laughs> yep, go for it. Um, it is the smallest seed. Yeah, it's barely a pin drop. Yeah. Right. I, and out of it comes this huge, massive tree yep. that provides sanctuary for, like, you know, the mm -hmm. animals. And it, Birds. it's so abundant, right? Yes. And I was just like, yo, the devil is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was, I was like, okay, Jesus, I see you. You, mm -hmm. you actually use the mustard seed yeah. as a way to illustrate because we knew he knew we were going to have this conversation. He knew that yeah. we were going to, well, what is, you know, the difference between a mustard seed and an apple seed, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's smaller. <laughs> yeah, it's very tiny, teeny tiny. I remember when my mom and I went to Israel together one time, and uh, they had some mustard seed plants, and she put some mustard seeds in the palm of her hand, and she must have had a hundred of them, and they was just barely took up any space in her hand at all. They're that that, that tiny, wow. and it really drove that point home to me that just the insy insy bitsiest faith is enough to overcome and be an epic conqueror in anything that might come our way. We just have to act on that faith and it will move mountains for us. So again, you can see from the first four buckets that it's all the enemy strategy, just like the fake news is talked about today, going over the airwaves, everything that's not really based on truth. And so that's why it's so important. Like what you did is to make that little log and track yourself for a bit and see what kind of thoughts are flying through because like you notice, then you start catching yourself already by day two. So that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By day two. <laughs> well, not only that, Mama J, like he says that it pleases God. Yes. So a mustard seed of faith pleases God. Yes. What can an apple seed Right, a size thing. Yeah. Yeah. A watermelon <laughs> seed. There you go. Yeah. What about an avocado seed? There you go. That's a nice thing. You can go on and on. That's there. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why as we grow our faith and so on, it just really gets gooder and gooder all the way through. Amen. Yeah. Gooder and gooder. Judaism. I love it. <laughs> Oh, you know I've been in North Carolina for a while when I start getting that like <laughs> thing, I was just like whoa That's my okay. kids are always like uh excuse me you grew up in California I'm like yeah I'm sorry okay. yeah I know it happens when I go to the east coast I also get that start seeping in Right. All right, the fifth bucket, we're going to wrap up this episode pretty soon, but we're coming to the fifth bucket right now, which is <laughs> believing God and believing in ourselves to do well and overcome. And those are some of the thoughts, but percentage-wise, they're very minimal until we begin to flip the script and turn those other negative ones into positive ones. But this fifth bucket of believing God and believing in ourselves that we're going to do well and that we're over going to overcome. That's why we're epic because everything's Ooh. possible in Christ. Yes. <laughs> and so those thoughts also do fly through, but a lot of times because of the other four, we discount and minimize those thoughts as though they're not good enough thoughts you know, to carry yeah. us through. And so that's the challenge or the battle of the mind that we fight. Right. So what about that fifth bucket for you, Akessa, when you did your little exercise? So it actually, um, there was this promise that I was waiting for that I had journaled, you know, a few months ago and it came through like, I, I was looking at it and I was just like, whoa, I had to do a double take because I was just like, are you serious? So what I like to do in my journals when, when I have like an answer to prayer or answer to a promise. I like to date it. I like to go back yes. to those, you know, previous journals and like use, you know, a different color pen just right. to 
that's just how yeah. I'm weird. <laughs> no, that's very important to do. In fact, the scripture backs that up because in the Old Testament, uh, yeah. they would be told by God to build a memorial or to set up a, some rocks on a, like a, a stack of rocks as a memorial so that whenever they pass that way through again, they would remember that God met them there and met their need. And so when you do stuff like that, we're actually creating memorials where we can go back and recall and recount the goodness of God, which then helps fuel us going forward when all those other four buckets of thoughts are trying so much to get us to buy into them. And we're saying, no way, Jack, <laughs> I am buying into what the word of the Lord says. And, and I did. I like literally, like, I was just like, praise report there and, you go like, i love it so you know much. like oh Lord, thank you so much i love <laughs> you so much <laughs> and that's what comes out of that when we see that we fall in love with jesus all over again um, again and again and that's really really powerful so okay. i think if we look at all of the things we just talked about we could actually speak about abraham who is often in the scripture called our father of faith yeah. Who really received some amazing promises from God. And when God promised him, he was already up in years. So that's also known as being old. <laughs> when God, seasoned, I like to say yes. <laughs> season, very seasoned, extremely. And when God called him, he was already up in years and he had to still wait and exercise patience and endure long 20 more years until God's promise came to pass right at that appointed time. And we see that there in Romans 4.18, where it says, who, contrary to hope, believed in hope, so that he became the father of many nations. And so he holds that position of being the father of our faith because he gave us the example of even if you have to wait a long time, God will get you where you need to be when you need to be there. You just have to keep moving forward. Amen. I, I love this journey, just this, you know, being able to see, okay, that's why you took me this route. Yes. You know, like, yes. I get it now. And yeah. even though like in, in that process, you know, you're like just struggling, but like I said, the layers are coming off. Yeah. And and you have that hope. It's anchoring you, but it's also yes. fueling you. Yes. Like I'm I'm finding like it that hope um is is giving me the energy to just be joyous. Joy present. And, yes. Joy present. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And and I remember like phone calls that I would make, like you know, what's going on, what's happening, like, and Holy Spirit would just be like, does it really matter? And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, it sure doesn't. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's part of the process of our growth in him, isn't it? Yes. And we see that in Abraham's journey as well. His faith had to get walked out in patience. Okay. But what's so powerful is his bucket number five, really. The scripture says it was accounted to him as righteousness. So as he just kept with his mustard seed faith, walking forward towards what God had promised him, it was accounted to him as righteousness, which is right standing with God. So it goes back to that comment that you made a little bit ago, Akessa, about how it pleases God. And Abraham's faith pleased God and our faith pleases God. So how dare that dirty devil try to tell us that, you know, we're just not up to muster, you know, we just right. don't have what it really takes. You know, he always trying to push us down and we're like, no, we need to pop right back up. Like how you try to push a ball into a, a thing of water. It'll just pop right back up. Yeah. And we just need to pop right back up and say, get behind me, Satan. You know? That's right. Because, you know, those thoughts are not from God. So the point that I get from all of this and the lesson that I learned from Abraham's story is in while we're waiting so often circumstances will appear contrary. And that's where those first four buckets really go into overtime and try to yeah. jeopardize us and to get us to let go of our faith and our trust and our belief in God. But when we finally figure that out, I ain't letting go. That's right. <laughs> I am holding on with both hands 
and ain't nothing going to talk me out of this. Right. You ain't keeping my promises. There you me. go. Woo. <laughs> yeah. And then we get the sass going on and that's what we need is just a sass back and say, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. 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 With a little bit of snap. <laughs> that's right. Because bullies hate it when you are empowered in that way, because they're trying to, you know, take away all of your strength and power yeah. and put you into fear mode. And when we go sass and back, then we're like, hey, no way, Jose. It's you know, then we are, are pushing it back. That's fantastic. Right. But I found it very interesting, though, Kessa, that Bible scholars estimate that Moses spent 40 years on his wilderness journey himself before God could use him to then lead the Israelites to their promised land, which would be another 40-year journey. So this guy had 80 years of holding on to the promises right. of God. That's a long time. So you remember how I had shared with you a year ago that I had lost some weight and I yeah. decided to take control of my health. Yes. Like a lot of that, and I, I've been able to maintain that, keep that off and start working out, right? And so my trainer, she was just like, Oh, you need to take supplements. Like what supplement was Moses on? Exactly. <laughs> Faith supplements. Yeah. Okay. 80 years. Yeah. Like it, that blows my mind away. Like, yeah. you know and what I mean? Imagine 60,000 thoughts a day go through your mind. 80 years, rack that up. I can't even know what the number is. Right. But in other words, he had to keep taking a hold of himself, keep taking a hold of himself and choosing yeah. to think rightly. And I think that's what's so powerful for us as epic conquerors is to take charge of our thoughts and then pull down those imaginations and any thought that tries to fill up those first four buckets. Yes, and uh, that really is such a powerful thing for us to realize. You know, we're coming to that point in our podcast where we pick out a spiritual weapon Ooh. to spotlight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think my spiritual weapon to spotlight in this episode would be taking every thought captive Amen. Uh, because that is such a weapon that we don't realize it as a weapon. We just think it's an activity or something to do, keep us busy, maybe busy work. But in reality, it's actually a weapon because we're taking away the power and the strength of those first four buckets. And so that would be my spiritual weapon, taking every thought captive. That's what would be really yours, Akessa? If you um, not like one. So my spiritual weapon would be let patience have its perfect work. Ooh, that's an amazing two edged <laughs> sword right there. Taking every thought captive while you let patience have its perfect or complete or mature work. Ooh, because then it will produce whatever it was. And then you won't be just a wishing and a hoping you'll right. actually be bringing things into reality. And that, my friend is so epic. So epic. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so fun. And then we can rejoice, which will uh, take away from that one bucket that said, you know, it discounts your accomplishments, bucket number one. Then we right. rejoice. So that eliminates that bucket. Ah, I love it so much. Now we come to that spiritual power affirmation. We know our battle Ooh. cries. I am. <laughs> we love that because we are. Everything is possible in Christ. But yes. the power affirmation that we chose for this episode is I am secure in God's love for me, because that's that fifth bucket. If we can just fill that up with this uh, awareness and understanding that we're secure in his love, we got it made. It's golden. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> golden. a really great power affirmation. Yes. I am secure in God's love for, for me. me. Yes. Yeah, not right. everybody else. Yes, everybody else, but That's not right. everybody else at the exclusion of ourselves. Right. But for, for us, we are assured of that. So that's fantastic. So you know how we do at Epic Conquerors, wherever you are, do the drum roll on your dash or of your car or your steering wheel or your lap or your desk or whatever. And then we do the count of three and then we start shouting it out. I am Epic. And then I am secure in God's love for me. So here we go. Drum roll. One, two, three. I, I am, am epic. epic. And 
I am pure in God's love for me. Hallelujah. I tell you, every time we do these power affirmations, there's such a surgence of the Spirit of God that just wells up because God loves that that we're in bucket number five. <laughs> Amen. That's so good. You know, it's just so important that we as epic conquerors don't allow thoughts to discourage and tempt us to shut down and feel like what's the use because we're so encouraged by the scripture not to quit and give up. James one says, let patience have its perfect work. Then you'll be complete, whole, entire, lacking nothing. What an amazing place of prosperity and success right there to just be totally complete and whole and just satisfied with where you are at the moment because with Christ in you, you have everything. We know God's plans and purposes are going to come to pass. Just yeah. believe him. Believe in yourself to follow him and expect that you are coming into that wide, broad place of his provision what would you say would be your takeaway, Akessa, from this whole episode? What really stands out to you as like this boom? Um, <clears throat> you know, like you were saying, just taking every thought captive. Mm. And um, I remember when we were in the training center and you had done this like illustration of like the Romans taking their prisoner and having them in chains and bringing them to the crowds. And so like that idea of just taking our thoughts and just pulling that chain and bringing it to the obedience of Christ. I was just like, Ooh, that's a great yeah, picture. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Making an open show of them triumphing over them, right. which is what Jesus did with the devil when he went down after he went to the cross and he went down to gather the saints that were waiting for him. And then he defeated the devil and made an open show of him triumphing over him. And that's what we get to do. That's an epic picture you just brought to mind. <laughs> yeah, so that's so awesome. So epic conquerors, we just want to thank you so much for listening to our episodes. We just appreciate it so much. Every Monday and Friday, we drop new episodes and we really invite you to join us in our epic conquerors, Facebook group where we have other things that go on in there that's just kind of fun and develops our community so much, gives mm -hmm. us more often inspiration besides Mondays and Fridays. And we invite you to join us there. And right before we say ciao for now, I just want to say to all of our Epic Conquerors, listen to God and hear mm -hmm. him say to you today, right now this very second, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into my joy. Yeah, that's what we all want to hear. So we're in bucket number five, baby. <laughs> let's live in that bucket and let's go forth and conquer in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. On that note, it's time, that bittersweet time to say ciao. For now.